when you start up InDesign, you might see something like this. It depends very much on what version of InDesign you have installed. You might get this welcome screen where you see your recent files if you've never opened it before. It may just be empty or you may get some suggestions for tutorials or templates. Uh, and if you want to make a new document, you have the create new button here. If you don't have this, you can always go to the file menu and click on new and select document here. And this will be available in all versions of InDesign. And even when you open this, you might see different kind of windows. So if you're in a very old version of InDesign, you might just see a smaller window with the options that you have here on the right without all of this extra space at the left. We won't really need this extra space very much, but I'll tell you quickly what you can find here. Everything that's in the right, these are the most important important options, and you can find these in, again, in all versions of InDesign. So here on the right, you basically, on the left, sorry, uh, you basically have a bunch of templates. Some of them, these which have only simple graphics, are blank pages. The ones that have all kinds of other elements on them are templates that already contain layout elements. We won't be using these templates at all, the ones that have content already, and we'll rarely be using the other ones as well. Uh, if you do want to use these, you'll see you have here three categories, print, web, and mobile. Print gives you the standard sizes for uh, paper. At the top here we have the American sizes. If I click view all presets, I also get the normal, logical, your international si uh, sizes. So A5, A4, A3 and all and a few others. Uh, you also get templates for the web. The main difference here is uh, that the sizes are in pixels rather than in points or picas, which is a typographic unit of measurement. You see here, for example, 21p0, that means 21 picas. And for mobile as well, you get sizes in points, but you get obviously different sizes for different kinds of screens. Now, while you can do work for web and mobile, InDesign is not the best public, uh, the best uh, application for that. It's mostly suited to print design. And regardless of what preset you choose from here, though, for example, when you're designing a magazine, it's not the best idea always to start with a preset. Uh, but regardless of what you choose, you'll still get to fill in the options here. Uh, so let's fill in uh, the sizes that we need here, the measurements we need for our document, uh, to have a bit of a more familiar environment, I'm going to change the units from PICAS to millimeters, and our document is going to be 280 millimeter, millimeters wide and 385 tall. Um, you can switch the orientation. I'm going to click preview here so you can see the document. And you can switch the orientation from portrait to landscape, but we're going to keep it keep it on portrait because that's what we need. You can create several pages if you want to, if you're going to make the document from the start, the amount of pages that you need for our project. We only need one right now, but you can add all of them at the beginning or you can add them later when you need them if you need more um, and you can choose to start the numbering of the pages at whatever number so for example if you're working uh, on different sections of a magazine and different documents uh, for example for different people to be able to work at the same time or you're working on uh, different chapters from a book in different documents so the pages don't move around all the time as you add and subtract, subtract content. You can have a document start at page 
23, for example, or whatever you want, and then just put them all together, each starting at its proper page at the very end. This really affects mostly the page numbering that is visible on a page if you have that. Uh, facing pages makes your document suitable to be printed in such a way that you have symmetrical margins on the outside and on the inside so that the, that you can have them like in a magazine or a book for example next to each other connected at the spine otherwise they will just be one after the other like loose leaves like you would have for several posters for example we'll be working with this later on for now since we have just one page it doesn't really matter whether it's checked on or off uh, and again, just leave primary text frame empty for now. This is actually a good option for books, but for what we're doing, we're not going to need it. And then we're going to select the number of columns here. So we've already looked at the document and we saw we need six columns. And you can see in the background that InDesign has already drawn them. And the column gutter is the space between the columns here. Uh, and this is going to be 8 millimeters for our document. For now, you're going to have to trust me. I measured all these for our project. Um, and for the margins, you see you can choose values for the top, bottom, left, and right margins. If you have facing pages checked on, you'll have inside and outside instead of left and right because it changes depending on whether it's a right hand or a left hand page again for our purposes it doesn't really matter what even what they're called and i'm gonna change this value to five millimeters and you'll see when i change one of these the others change as well because they are connected by this little button here that makes all four settings the same i'm going to want to click on it to break that link and I'm going to want to make the bottom edge 10 millimeters. And you see now the others don't change with it. And then you have two more options here. Bleed and slug are areas that come outside of the page. I'm just going to insert values here for example's sake. So you see I get an extra area outside the page. Uh, that is the bleed where images can move out of the page so that you have extra content for when you're printing and you don't want to get a white edge for example when the pieces of paper are cut you will see examples of this later on and the slug i'm gonna set this back to zero for the bleed we don't need this for this document you will need it for the others uh, and the slug is just an area outside the page where you can put in extra information. So it's used uh, in print shops, for example, or in professional printing plants to have information about the colors or about uh, the file names, the dates, who, uh, who the authors are, and all kinds of stuff like that. Most of the time, you don't really... I mean, it depends very much on the workflow you're going to use. We won't be using that at all. Uh, I'm going to put something like 30 millimeters here, just so you see there's an extra area here. This is where you can just put extra information, but we're not going to use this. So these are the values that we'll be using. If I want to... Um, to use these values over and over again, I can save a preset. I can click here on this button and save the preset and then it will show up here. But this time I don't want to, but it's a good thing to remember that you can save a particular preset if you're gonna use the same values over and over again. And now because I've clicked away, I've, uh, I've changed all of my values. I'm going to put them back in and I'm going to click create and I'm going to get the blank document as you saw it in the pre preview a few seconds before. So I quickly reintroduce the values. I'm just going to click create 
and this is what we're going to start with. In addition to this, we also should add the rows that will help us place all our content. To do that, we're going to go to Layout and Create Guides. And here, we're going to want 11 rows. The margins, uh, the gutter, sorry, will, will be 5 millimeter, just like the margins, or most of the margins. Uh, and then make sure fit to gu fit guides two is set to margins, not page, because you see the the rows shifting a bit. Because it's just taking into consideration the space from the top to the bottom margin to divide the space into eleven rows with five millimeters between them. If I click page, it ignores those margins and goes from the top to the bottom of the page. And so we want 11, 5, and fit guides to margins, no columns because we've already introduced those in the document. This creates the guides just for this particular page. I'm going to click OK, and we're going to start with this to continue putting the content on it. <laughs> 